What's going on YouTube? It's Tyler the Antenna Man and today I'm going to break away from my traditional cord cutting and TV reception videos to ask a question that most of you probably do not know. Who owns your local TV station? You know, the TV station that you watch every night for your local news, that channel 6 or channel 7 with the anchors that you've known for years. Who owns that station? Most of you are probably thinking one of two different scenarios. The first scenario you're probably thinking of is if you have a CBS 7 in your area, you're thinking, oh, it's gotta be owned by CBS. Why else would it show CBS programming? And then the rest of you are probably thinking, oh, it's owned by a little local production company, owned by a John Smith that lives and works in the area, and they just show NBC programming on the side. In large cities, the networks do own the TV stations, such as New York and Philadelphia, where Comcast, the parent company of NBC, owns WCAU, NBC10 Philadelphia, NBC4 in New York, but in most cases they are owned by larger media companies. Typically you can find out who owns your local TV station by going on their website and scrolling down to the bottom of the page. If it's not listed you can always look up their Wikipedia article, just be sure to check the sources. Chances are your local TV station is owned and operated by either Nexstar Broadcasting, Sinclair Broadcasting, or another very large media company that owns and operates hundreds of TV stations throughout the United States. And many of you are probably saying, why does that matter? There's nothing wrong with big business. They can make a profit as long as they operate the local TV station in the public's interest. Well, that doesn't really happen with these very big media companies. I'm going to use Sinclair Broadcast Group as an example of what they've done to many TV stations in two areas I've lived in. Now I used to live in the State College area, which was the Altoona Johnstown market. And there was an ABC, NBC, CBS, you know, Fox station, just like there are in most markets. Sinclair Broadcast Group operates the ABC, NBC, and Fox affiliates in that market. And most of you are probably saying, what's the problem? It's just a big company, they're gonna, you know, treat each station the the way it should be. Well, what happened is all the stations just kind of combined into one mega station. And what would have been three totally separate newscasts is now one. Take a look. Wildfire covering several hundred acres has kept crews in Center several County hundred busy. acres has kept crews in Center County busy. Hundred acres has kept crews in Center County. Bridget McClure was there today. Bridget McClure was also there today. She has the latest. And she has the latest. So as you can see, where we would normally have two separate newscasts with different stories on the ABC and NBC affiliate, the Foxes usually have a different network produce the newscast for them in smaller markets. We just have one main newscast that goes on all of those stations, and they try to pretend that it's all different newscasts when in reality it's the same exact newscast. And the newscast is not produced well at all. Most of the reporters that make the stories that air on the newscast are multimedia journalists. And what they have to do is they have to film, edit, and report at the same time. Essentially they're doing three jobs for the price of one. And the quality really shows in the reports. When you have a reporter that has to basically make their own live shot, it's not in focus, everything's overexposed, and it just looks like a little handheld camera when interviews are done. This is the result of media consolidation thanks to Sinclair Broadcast Group. And if that's not a good enough example, I'm gonna use another example. They own and operate the Fox affiliate in the market I live in now, Scranton Wilkesbury. And they produce a newscast and you think, okay, cool, they produce a newscast, local anchors, local reporters. The anchors are not local at all. They are based out of South Bend, Indiana, which is several thousands of miles away from the communities that the newscast airs in. And pretty much all of the reporters, again, are multimedia journalists, where they are required to shoot, film, edit, report their story all in one. Again, three jobs for the price of one, and the quality really shows in it. Sinclair reported an operating income of $263 million for the fourth quarter of 2018. Yet they can't afford to have local anchors on this TV station or separate videographers to assist the reporter. Kind of greedy if you ask me. Another really big media company is Nexstar Media Group, and they own about 200 stations nationwide and are on track to buy another 50 from Tribune. In my market, Nexstar operates both the NBC and CBS affiliates. And at one time, they had separate newscasts with totally different anchors covering different areas. But what happened over time is Nexstar just started to cut costs at WYOU, which was a CBS affiliate, and slowly but surely make their newscast so bad that basically no one watched it. And then they threw in the towel about 10 years ago. So now they produce one single newscast that airs at the same time on both the NBC and CBS affiliate. This resulted in layoffs of 14 personnel that worked in WYU's news department. 
But you could argue the number of people employed in the news department would be much larger if Nexstar wasn't allowed to own and operate both WBRE and WYU. And technically they aren't. But what they did is create essentially a shell corporation known as Mission Broadcasting, which allows Nexstar to operate all the TV stations in the markets where they normally would not be allowed to own those TV stations. But the thing is, both WBRE and WYU are housed in the same department. There essentially is no Mission Broadcast with the exception of the name. They share the the same building, they share the same newscast, they share the same control room, they share the same engineer, they even share the same tower and broadcast transmitter that the TV stations broadcast on. Nexstar has done this in many markets nationwide where they were able to get their hands on two or more TV stations in the market. And to give you another idea on how it may affect you as a viewer, Nexstar commonly has retransmission disputes with cable companies, which has to do with how much money the TV station gets paid from the cable company to carry the signal. Many times, Nexstar will ask for more and more money each time, and as a result, the cable bill not only goes up, but sometimes the cable company will see what they are doing and then just drop their channels altogether. And then Nexstar starts airing on their TV stations, Cox Cable kicked your local TV stations off your lineup. Call them and demand them to carry the channels right now, which then results in a higher cable price. The greed of this company also has an impact on over-the-air viewers. As you guys already heard, they own the NBC and CBS affiliate MyMarket. Most TV stations in my market operate repeater stations, which repeat the over-the-air signal in areas where reception is hard to get, and Nexstar used to have them as well. But in 2010, Nexstar got rid of all their over-the-air repeaters from WBRE and WYU, affecting probably hundreds if not thousands of viewers in these smaller communities that relied on the signal for programming. The website claimed that their new digital VHF signal was far superior than their analog signal and reached the areas that needed translators at one time. But that isn't the case. I've set up the antennas in this market many times, and I've noticed that their signals are more subjectable to interference from both power lines and radio stations. And it's usually harder to get with a smaller antenna. In my opinion, Nexstar probably not only did this to cut costs, but to also leave viewers that rely on their over-the-air signals in the dark, so that way they have to subscribe to a cable or satellite service, thus there is more retransmission money for Nexstar. So there you have several examples on why there used to be restrictions on how many TV stations one company could own in a market. And you can see what happens when one company controls two or more stations. There's less jobs in the area, less choices for local newscasts, and more control on how much they charge local cable providers, and then also the incentive to not improve their over-the-air signals so that people buy cable and they get more money through retransmission fees. Hopefully this video gives you an idea on who truly owns these local TV stations. And hopefully you live in a market that doesn't have a really big media company such as Nexstar and Sinclair. Now in my area, we do have WFMZ, which is locally owned and operated, and they do a really good job not only producing very good newscasts, but they operate translators in several areas so that people can get their over-the-air signal when they normally would not be able to. Now, if you do live in an area that has a TV station owned by Nexstar or Sinclair, and you notice that their over-the-air signal isn't really that good, feel free to file a complaint with the FCC. They're supposed to take action on this kind of stuff, but they're just looking the other way because I'm sure most of you guys know money talks and you know politics, all that kind of jazz. But feel free to do that if you want to at least have your voice heard. Subscribe to my channel for more cord cutting updates and have an awesome day.